is serving the non-traditional student population accelerated initiatives that increase retention and completion. Please welcome Carlos Morales from Terrence Country College Connect. Thank you very much. Good morning and thank you for the, for the introduction. Um, <clears throat> as the title of the presentation uh, states, I'm gonna talk about uh, how we can, uh, or how we have been serving non-traditional students uh, in an accelerated way. Uh, I'm gonna use this as a point of reference in terms of the areas that I will be uh, addressing uh, with you this, this afternoon, actually this morning, um, uh, to, to guide kind of the conversation. Uh, one, one of the important elements is that this presentation is based on the uh, concept and creation of a, a non-traditional campus in Fort Worth, Texas, in a part of the Tarrant County College District. Uh, we have 100,000 students, and of those 100,000, 20,000 more or less are uh, in this campus, which is a, a fully online campus. Uh, I see we are having a couple of uh, tech issues here, but we will, we will, manage, we will manage along the way. Um, the, the campus was envisioned as part of a, a concept plan, a strategic plan in 2012. The late previous chancellor envisioned that as a way to uh, increase access uh, to education. As a community college, uh, we are a, an open access institution, okay? And you know, it's kind of how you, how you widen something that is already open because you know, there are no admission you know, uh, requirements, if you will, besides the, the uh, Texas Success Initiative exam, which is the TSI equivalent to the College Board and SAT. Uh, so ca that, that's kind of the point of reference we use for uh, the conversation. Uh, the, the campus was put together in, in 14 months, okay? is um, accredited by SACS. Uh, we need to secure the accreditation in order to confirm the degrees that we have. We have 18 fully online degrees uh, as well because you know a campus has to confer degrees and graduate students so it's not only teaching courses uh, uh, for students to advance so that's an important aspect that I want to ensure we we uh, provide to the audience here uh, as I stated before um, this is a part of a of a, a, a strategic plan the campus is the sixth campus of the uh, district or the system. There are five campuses that are face-to-face. -face. More or less, they have between 15 uh, and 17,000 students, in, you know, part-time, full-time, and, and everything in between. The strategic plan that I mentioned before, the mandate we had was to develop a non-traditional uh, uh, campus uh, for non-traditional students. And the non-traditional students, if you go to the iPads, uh, websites, uh, actually with the iPads, the NCES website, uh, they define the non-traditional student as the student that has financial issues, time issues, uh, motivation, <coughs> motivational issues, and I kind of summarize those as life issues, okay? They want to multitask, they want to go to college, they want to, or they have to take care of um, their family members, etc. So the, the non-traditional student uh, nowadays has become the majority of the type of students that we are, we are having in many of our uh, institutions. We established the operation in 14 months, and uh, as I, as I uh, usually joke, this uh, organization, for, for, most, for, for most things, you know, let me just say it this way, we are born, uh, you know, and then uh, we, we stay in the crib, and then we start uh, crawling, and if we do it well, then we start, you know, walking and then running. In this particular case, he was born running because from the get-go, you know, we managed to get 20,000 students. You know, the responsibility of, of that uh, supported with uh, or by 350 faculty members. In a nutshell, these are the modalities that we offer uh, uh, to students. Uh, two main areas: e-learning. We have the online degrees that I mentioned before and we have an accelerated weekend college. The, the main element uh, as a new component, if you will, is the weekend college. Uh, the reason <coughs> behind this, and I, and I have another slide there, is that in the state of Texas, there is a document that publishes the, um, all the information about the four-year and two-year public institutions in terms of graduation rates, you know, funding, uh, I mean, the whole set of statistics and one piece of information that was very um, difficult to swallow was that at the two-year level, students were taking 
four years to graduate, okay? And they were accumulating over 90 credits to graduate when the programs are designed for two years and for 60 uh, credits. So, you know, those are uh, important elements that uh, kind of led to this part of the operation. The, the side on, on e-learning, the, the main concept was to not only increase access, but also uh, provide a flexibility to students. We are in an urban location and uh, with the pros and cons that that brings, but uh, we were uh, under the notion and the feeling that uh, a lot of students were not being served because of the traditional method and the limitations in terms of times and, and programs that they, that they had. All this is supported by student services. Um, uh, we have online advising, the remote proctorist for exams, uh, online tutoring as well, and an online writing center. So pretty much the entire set of responsibilities a campus has, a physical campus, we have them for the online uh, and the accelerated uh, uh, methodology. In, in terms of uh, our uh, ethnicity uh, composition, we are predominantly a, a, a white institution, if you will, a, an Anglo institution. However, we are, a, my campus, my particular campus is an emerging Hispanic serving institution, Hispanic serving campus. Uh, these are the, the most recent set of data, but you know, as of spring of, of 17, we were at 24.6, and you know, we always run off towards the benefit. So uh, in that aspect, we were almost NHSI, but the district uh, is also an HSI institution. You see the females represented at, at a higher number, significantly higher than the males uh, in our campus. And you see here also the age representations. Uh, uh, in the case of, of our campus, we have a, a little older uh, operation, uh, I mean a, a age, if you will, in terms of connect compared to what happens at the district uh, uh, side as well, which they are much younger uh, for a couple of years compared to uh, uh, our students. Uh, important figures because I know that a lot of people uh, care about how we are doing this uh, in terms of enrollment. Uh, you see here the, the two sets of data and we measure enrollment from fall to fall, uh, 17,000 uh, in fall of 16 and 20,000 in fall of 17. And these are again enrollment. This is not a FTE. We have the weekend college as well represented there and that is kind of a hybrid operation and again I will expand as we move forward through the through the presentation. An important aspect uh, in terms of uh, why we are here is the success rate. The success rate um, in the private sector will ensure you know funding and will ensure you know new initiatives but in the state of Texas is equal to that because in Texas we have performance based funding. 10% and I have a colleague here from, from Texas so she's, I see her nodding. Um, one important element is that in the state of Texas, 10% of the appropriations from the state, so the budget that the state will assign to us uh, is, is um, restricted to success points. In a nutshell, success points means that there are certain mile markers or milestones that the state has set um, that will equal to points. You're talking about how many students we progress from developmental or remedial classes to regular classes, how many students accomplish 15 credits, how many students graduate on time. I mean, there are like 10 or 15 metrics, and each of those uh, equate to one point or, or two points, and then the totality of those points equal up to 10% of the budget. In our case, it's about maybe $25 million that are you know, at stake, and it's a zero-sum game, so our gains are somebody else's losses. It's not that everybody gets their 10% because you know, it, it's always uh, in, 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 in flux if you will. So again, these are important uh, elements for, for what we, did, what we do every, every day. Um, in terms of the non-traditional student, I, and I already uh, mentioned some of these before, the traditional student is the one that is full-time, okay, and attends uh, mostly during the day and lives uh, near a, a campus, okay? But the non-traditional student, and that's the majority we are seeing, uh, they, are, they study all times of the day, you know, maybe I, I bet that some of you have those big windows of time between 10 and 2 p.m. in where there's no action in face-to-face -face operations, okay? Uh, in, in online, you know, that, that doesn't happen, but um, 
this is an important element that more and more institutions are realizing in terms of uh, maneuvering and fixing their, their schedules. They work part time and they are always on the go and mobile and they want to multitask. Okay. <clears throat> For those students, completion is the goal. Okay, they, they are determined to uh, earn a higher education credential. Okay, uh, the, the, the life uh, issues, as I call, are the ones that are uh, uh, applying negative force on their goals. Okay, uh, again, the, the full time students at the certificate level they take usually 3.3 years if they are full time, but then if you compare with the associate's degree, it takes 3.8 years. And this is national, these are national. Uh, statistics. If you are a part time, it takes you 4.4 years as opposed as five years for an associate degree. This is pretty much the main element uh, uh, in which many institutions are revamping their programs, uh, revamping their operations in terms of how they approach students, and also uh, doing more and more online. The source of this data is a report that is called Time is the Enemy. <coughs> so if you, can, if you want to look it up, you know, it tells you a lot of things in terms of uh, how this is seen at the national level in the United States. Um, some, some of the characteristics that we have been seeing uh, in, in our uh, campus is that they prefer the online uh, operation. Again, you saw the enrollments there. They tend to be older, okay, single parents and part-time students, mid-career professionals, people that are displaced from their workplaces, you know, because of the economy. But then uh, uh, they come to college to retool and refocus on, on something else. Also, we see a lot of continuing education students and, of course, people at risk looking for a second chance as well as uh, wage earners. So those are the characteristics that we see on the traditional student that we are serving at a our our campus if you will you see also the 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 trend in in terms of age okay and this is a national uh, trend but we are seeing very much similarities in terms of the audience that we serve uh, at Tarrant as well one of the things that we uh, again since the get-go focus on was to provide a uh, the flexibility to students and, and online is as flexible as it could be okay because it's at your time you know, at your at your leisure, okay, within within certain boundaries of, of due dates, <laughs> but uh, you know, a lot of people um, <clears throat> take advantage of the flexible class schedule that we have developed. The other thing is uh, that we have put a lot of pressure and emphasis on the length uh, of the time students take to complete the degree, okay, uh, very very specifically on the weekend college program. And again, you know, I have a slide and a section for that, but one of the things that we do is that we provide a <clears throat> not only intrusive advising, but we do not allow students to go and explore the university catalog, okay? They are enrolling a program, and he, he's not here, but my director of Weekend College, he's, he's also presenting, and he <clears throat> is the one that makes sure that students don't deviate from the degree plan that we have set for them and we now have online advisors that also provide intrusive advising they call them you know if they disappear you know missing in action those kind of things so it, it is very important uh, to stay to stay on on track on <coughs> on that aspect uh, one of the things that we have seen too is uh, about 50 percent of the of the students we serve uh, they prefer eight week courses okay the terms on you know the shorter terms are better for them and also a, a shorter or a smaller load, okay? They are not always uh, enrolling in 15 credits. They are enrolling seven credits or, or eight, uh, uh, you know, nine credits every eight weeks, but at the end of that semester, okay, they completed 15 credits. So it's kind of the same thing, but at a lower pace and, you know, lower lower load and, and you know, uh, uh, lighter for, for them. Um, this particular slide is one that complements what we do in terms of the delivery format. Uh, you know, you see here the percentages, okay? Um, online continues to be a, a, you know, the high preference, but one important element is that we recognize that the online and accelerated is not for everybody, okay? You know, students that enroll in these programs, they, they know what they are signing up to, okay? We tell them, okay, there is a, a, a high level of commitment there is also support, but you know, it's, it's two ways. It's like uh, 
when 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 we were in college, you know, and, and you had that exam, okay, and you say, well, you know, God help me manage this situation, but if you didn't study, there's no way God is gonna give you, okay, and I'm and I'm translating from Spanish, okay, acuérdense de eso, Dios ayúdame, pero si no estudié, no podemos hacer nada. Ayúdate que yo te ayudaré. Ayúdate que yo te ayudaré. Eh, so with that said, you know, you, you see you see this this set of, of information here that, that we that we do. There is another element in terms of, of the non-traditional student, uh, in and this is in the context of North Texas. I, our college is located in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, you know, growing like uh, I used to say weeds in the summer, but growing like flower flowers in a in a you know after a, a big rain in in spring. Yeah because a lot of companies are relocating to Texas. Low taxes, a low cost of life, you know, uh, equidistant from, from both coasts, uh, plus all the other things. And these companies are relocating, but then the citizens do not necessarily have the skill set to aspire to these kind of jobs, okay? So many companies, okay, and, and I'm gonna point to my colleague here, want the students train for three months ago not for tomorrow, for three months ago, okay? And how you do that? Well, of course, accelerated programs is a way, but I'm still, you know, not gonna de deliver three months ago. It might be three months ahead, if you will. But uh, as you see here, they are looking to transition to a new career because of, you know, multiplicity of, of reasons. They also see that as the next step for graduation, and they also see a, an opportunity to promote uh, themselves, you know, seeking a new position. And we have seen a lot of that happening in the weekend college because they, they finish in 18 months, okay? So, you know, in year and a half, you can actually, you know, see the results and aspire to a, you know, better position, you know, higher wage, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, the, this particular slide, you know, is, is one in terms of the, of the job openings, you know, we continue to see that the economy is robust, okay? There is gonna be also jobs that do not exist uh, that we will see in, in the next 10 years. So we are also adapting to, to those jobs that require a different uh, set of skills, a different focus in terms of what uh, people need to do, uh, knowing that there is gonna be a lot of automation. When that uh, economy really flourishes, it's gonna be a lot of automation. So we need to create some sort of a safety net but for those that uh, lose their jobs to automation, whatever, whatever that is. Um, in, in terms of this particular uh, slide, the, the element is that in, in Tarrant County, 42% uh, uh, of, the, of the students uh, um, that take, you know, that come back in terms of looking for, for those uh, uh, opportunities, you know, m manage to be in an, in an unemployment or in an employed situation, okay? So they, are, they have been on and off uh, uh, in, in that situation because they did not finish the credential, okay? So they are seeing the opportunity of non-traditional uh, uh, offerings as a way to finalize something that they started before because of the on and off situation they, they had. Um, this is an interesting slide because um, I, I'm gonna focus on the 6.2, okay? Uh, there are 6.2 million unfilled jobs right now, okay? And a lot of companies are um, uh, revamping or expanding their tuition uh, reimbursement programs, okay? So in my particular case, our institution is capitalizing on that. So if Hewlett Packard establishes in, in, in Fort Worth or actually Dynon, which is the yogurt company, has a plan there. They they are revamping their tuition reimbursement programs with their employees. Okay, so you know uh, m my team goes to those companies, which kind of sell the program and sell the, the 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 benefit here, and then you know students matriculate and you know the the, the organization, the employer, pays for for their education, but. From those 6.2 million uh, uh, jobs, a couple of years ago, Siemens uh, had over 3,000 uh, jobs on field. And they couldn't fill those jobs because many of the applicants couldn't handle basic, uh, basic math, basic arithmetic. Okay, so again, the promise of, of a better job, but you don't have the skill set, and again, you know, maybe that's another presentation on why those things happen. But uh, you, you see 
that there is a, a continuous need for uh, resolving the, the needs of the unskilled one uh, and the underskilled ones. Um, the forecast is that 80% of uh, existing jobs will not exist in 2050. Okay, uh, there is a book uh, written by Thomas Friedman from the New York Times, and it's called uh, Thank You For Being Late, and it talks about what will happen in terms of automation. Okay, and how people are creating opportunities from the, for themselves because the automation is going to be very brutal. They say that it's going to be industrial revolution number four. So again, 80% of what we see here as jobs will not exist in 2050. So you know, we need to start creating better, better uh, programs for that. Um, for us, uh, we, we are managing a situation in which uh, by 2020, it is forecasted that uh, 60% 65 percent of the jobs will require some sort of, of a post secondary credential you know not the bachelor's degree but not necessarily the associate so something in between or you know it could be less than the associate's degree uh, for example you know we you know my chancellor is very big on on the impact we made to the to the county and you know the wastewater the wastewater uh, plant operator okay goes to our college the, the constructor worker, the firefighters, you know, all those uh, um, uh, professions and careers that are in, in you know, city jobs are uh, usually provided by our institutions. So we have a direct impact on, on many uh, of these uh, post-secondary opportunities people, people achieve. Uh, this is pretty much uh, what, I, what I mentioned in terms of that 75%, okay? Um, 89% uh, of the graduates from our institution remain in the county. Okay, so there is a con direct contribution to the to the economy. Uh, in, in a nutshell, our contribution to the to the local economy is over a billion dollars. Okay, between you know what we spend and what we translate in terms of jobs for people, uh, and this is the other element. You know, there are 30 million dollars, give or take. I mean, jobs. I mean to say. Um, available that do not require a bachelor's degree, okay? Uh, my, my, I'm borrowing this uh, statement from my chancellor, and he says that, um, and he showed data recently, that we are receiving a large number of graduate students, okay, to come to the community, they come to the community college because mm -hmm. they want to retool and they want to get a certification. So, you know, he's, he jokes if he needs to put a billboard, graduate school of choice, Tarrant County College, okay, because you have your bachelor's, but you are retooling with an associate's or a certificate, so, you know, you become a graduate kind of, you know, a, a student, if you will. Um, with, with that said, let me just focus on the e-learning part uh, very quickly here. Uh, we, we continue to create circumstances for the students to, to uh, take advantage of the acceleration and the flexibility. What you see here is pretty much what we have been able to create uh, with the support of, of administration, of course, uh, to accelerate that path. We have eight week programs, and well, let me start this way. We have 16 week terms, which is the regular semester. We have eight week, we have seven week, we have May semester, winter semester, and the weekend college. Okay, so imagine a, a highway with five or six lanes, okay, uh, and, and there's nothing that impedes you from jumping into any, any lane. Uh, one of the things that we have been seeing is uh, students jumping from, from the eight week or the 16 week to the weekend college because they need two or three courses so they enroll in the seven, eight weeks and then they come back to the 16 week and they are able to achieve and, and enroll, uh, I mean, and complete uh, uh, faster. Uh, we have been also capitalizing on the summer uh, as well. Uh, um, one of the things that we have uh, been doing, and I don't know if you have seen this, Mary Jo, in, in your, uh, I don't think we have touched your, your institution yet, but one of the things that uh, we are doing is that I advertise my offerings in the student newspapers at four-year institutions, mm -hmm. okay? Why? Because they want to multitask. They come back home to Fort Worth, okay? And they want to work, go to the lake. There's no beach, of course, uh, like in Puerto Rico. <laughs> And they want to continue their studies. Okay, so you know that's a way in which we have been able to attract attract students. And last summer was the first time I did this at Taran, and we were able to bring about 500 students. 
okay? Um, so, you know, it's a number that, that is um, important to, to see. Uh, well, you know, this is pretty much what I, what I stated, uh, uh, and we capitalize on these efforts to allow students to advance, okay? Again, this is not for everybody, okay? Uh, but I understand that a lot of students are capitalizing on this type of, of offerings. Once again, all of, all of this is supported by student services, uh, and most of this happens online. There is a lot of automation also that happens in my campus, okay? And there is also a lot of services that are technology mediated, uh, if you will. Uh, in Texas, we have a May semester and a winter semester, so, you know, while we are, uh, and actually while, while I am enjoying yes. pasteles y arroz con andules cuando vengo, okay, uh, a lot of students are taking courses in the winter semester, so, you know, is the, I don't know how, how short is the summer in Puerto Rico, is five weeks or four weeks? Two meses, pero los cursos son cuatro semanas, cinco, seis. Cuatro. So four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, and you know the winter semester is almost four weeks. So one of the things that uh, happens also in this set of offerings is that uh, my campus operates in a perennial summer. Okay, so there is monthly starts, which is four weeks. So again, you know, it's equivalent to a summer. So knowing that those circumstances already exist, we have been able to add uh, other lanes or other possibilities for for students. This is the this is data that is fresh from the oven, as they say. Uh, this is the success rate for winter. Uh, this winter that just that just uh, finished. Okay, we have an 81.2 uh, success rate. The the trick here is that the faculty that teaches these courses are handpicked. This is not open for every faculty member. We handpick them because I'm controlling this number. I want to control that number, so I, you know, the dean and the academic affairs people handpick those faculty members. You see the attrition rate, which is, um, you know, uh, technically, you know, as you see, way below what is the average in terms of, you know, 25, 20 percent. Are, are you uh, are you doing any kind of filtering for the students? No. Okay. No. The, the Anybody can take. It's anybody, but let me let me give you the other part. Uh, so it, faculty is handpicked, but many of the students, uh, and that is data we need to to you know uh, uh, disaggregate. It's a combination of students that are in the four-year institution that want to take the course in the winter, so they are a little more disciplined, oh, yes. and they come on a mission basis. I need to do this. Is you know it's very economical. It's four weeks. The pain is you know. Uh, yeah, chronic or, or <laughs> chronic or whatever it is, you know, uh, for week for four weeks. But you know, I'm, I'm able to advance. And again, you know, you you are not even allowed to blink because if you blink, it's done. Um, this is data in regards to the monthly starts. Okay, this is the perennial summer approach. We started in in September. The the element here is that uh, the term starts the first Monday of, of every month. Okay, a uh, student starts the first Monday for four weeks, and then they keep, you know, enrolling in in other in other months. This is a new initiative. Okay, the success rate here, of course, is not the same as the winter semester, but is is on the average, you know, that we have been managing. Uh, this one is open to everybody. Okay, there is no much control here. Okay, and students go into that lane. They take a course and then they come back or continue in the lane that they were before, <laughs> 16, eight week, whatever, whatever that is. Do, um, you, do you have a degree that is only monthly start? Yes, wow. yes. The, the uh, equal to the eight week uh, program that I mentioned before, we have one of our business degrees is available in this format. Technically, all the degrees are available, but I wanted to start with one just to see how people reacted. Uh, uh, and you know, you see the figures here <coughs> with, with very little promotion, okay, uh, marketing, <coughs> if you will. Uh, these are the total enrollments that we that we have managed. And uh, again, you are seeing this, and this is also fresh information I provided to the chancellor before I left to come to this uh, event. Um, 
very quickly, the, the student services are, you know, uh, the ones you see here, online advising is, is not automated, it's people-based. You know, they are online advisors dispersed through Texas, and I'm, actually I have one in Florida as well, so it's people that work remotely, okay? They have a computer, they have a soft phone, and they have email, and they have Wi-Fi, and they just, you know, have their work already uh, uh, defined for them. I have about 15 or 16 part-time, so it's about eight full-time people, okay, uh, to support 20,000 students, uh, and more because of all the things that we need to explain later. Remote proctoring is the way we validate that the student enrolling a class is the student taking the exam and attending a class as well. Um, it's mandatory to all um, the sections that started now in, in fall 17. Uh, Cost-wise, uh, I already busted the budget by $10,000. <laughs> I got an email the other day. Okay, so, uh, but again, you know, it's a quality assurance element that you know, we, we, we should not focus too much on how much the quality costs, even though we recognize that there is a cost. Uh, we use smart thinking as the online tutoring service, okay? Uh, pretty much the entire set of uh, subjects there, it's about 25 subjects, okay? And also they provide the, the writing center, so those two are kind of uh, combined as well. Um, we, we have a, 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 a very lean operation, if you will. Uh, it's cost efficient, it's, it's focused, and we have been managing peer developed courses as well, and, and, and a lot of student engagement. Uh, the, the academic affairs team, uh, you know, help, help with this process, and you see the other components in, ter in terms of staff that we are able to uh, uh, manage there. Uh, one important element, because this is a dedicated campus to accelerated and online programs, we focus very highly on faculty development. Um, you see here some of the events that, that we have been focusing, and all of this is driven by the faculty. My only, my only requirement is that we need more, okay? I tell them, you know, we need this, we need that, you know, don't lose sight of X, Y, and Z, and they just translate all those elements uh, in terms of activities, uh, you know, uh, Every, every beginning of the semester, every mid uh, semester as well, and you know when things uh, uh, are needed too. The faculty that teach online at this campus is required to be trained before they teach online. It's not simultaneously, okay? So it's a gatekeeper. That's something that was in place when I started there. I only, uh, uh, I only tightened a little bit the belt there. Uh, one of the things that is different this time is that uh, instead of having a 12 week long training for faculty, okay, we change it to a competency based uh, training, training type. And there is a whole presentation on that, but I can tell you the, the following. Uh, I have taught in Blackboard, WebCT, Moodle, Canvas, all of them, okay? And if I am coming from another institution to this institution where I have been using the same tool, okay, and I have my experience, my training, my certifications, why I need to be trained in the same tool that I have been using before, okay? When, when, when there is a need for faculty to be uh, put on the classroom very quickly. With that said, we validate many of those certifications because it's the same, it's the same content, it's the same operation, and we are able to certi certify faculty in um, as short as one business day. There is a um, supplemental information like, you know, if you have course schedules from the past showing that you have been assigned those courses. I mean, any kind of documents that validate that faculty have been teaching for X number of years in X type of platform, mm -hmm. they are part of this process. If you are not in that group, you need them to go through each, each of these modules, okay? You see that there are six modules, including a, a, the elements about the, the policies and procedures that are specific to a, our institution. But these aspects are validated for those that already taught online and have that experience with the documentation they bring. And of course, they need to demonstrate it to you. So is it an in-house developed training, or is it QM, or is it? OLC is is in house. Is in house. Is in -house. Um, 
very quickly in regards to to the weekend college, and this is the some of what I said before in terms of the the reasoning that led to the creation of the of the weekend college. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a perennial problem. Okay, and again, if you go to the to the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board, you will see all the reports from 2013 at least until today uh, that says pretty much that you know 90 plus hours when they need 60 is designed for two years and they take four years okay the reasoning increase graduation rates okay or reduce the uh, time towards graduation the weekend college operates in a hybrid fashion okay is two days either friday or saturday you take two courses once a week between those hours every seven weeks and you finish in 18 months, okay? I don't think I have that slide here uh, about the program, but what it is is, let me see if I have it. Uh, <coughs> maybe not. Um, okay, so, uh, and you have student development as well, which is, you know, uh, supplementary to, to this. But again, the goal here is that students finish in 18 months by taking two classes every seven weeks. If they pair it with an additional online, a class, then of course they reduce eight weeks every time, okay? And there's no limit in terms of how many times they can they can do that. Um, the you see here again a summary of the of the accelerated initiatives. You have a couple of bullet points in terms of the reasoning: faster completion, you know, reduce the time to degree, increase increasing student success. This element is very important because the research says that. A, a lighter load equals higher success, okay? Taking two classes, you will have more time to focus on those as opposed to the five classes. So, you know, your, your GPA and your progression is a, a more manageable. Again, you know, you are advancing at a two course per term. So, you know, you see that you are doing and you are progressing. Uh, the other thing here, and it's the same also here, is that we are intentionally reducing the cost of education. The longer the student stays in my institution, the more complicated it is for me. Not only on the success points, but operationally speaking, I am throwing advising, I'm throwing all the services, and if the student is not progressing, uh, there's no reimbursement. If, I mean, if I need to be you know, very business oriented and, and, and profit oriented, if you will. Um, and again, you, know, you saw the numbers in terms of the students we, we have been uh, managing. Um, we, we focus on retention and engagement with these type of activities. Uh, the intrusive advising is very important. We, we shadow them, we follow them. As soon as they disappear, we, we follow them. Uh, we use the early alert systems in Blackboard, also in, the, in Blackboard, in uh, Web Advisor, which is our SIS, equivalent to Banner, Jensabar, all those that are out there. Um, these are some statistics in terms of the weekend college, okay? The weekend college started in the fall of 2014. We started with 69 students. And the important, the important figure is that uh, in May of 16, which is 18 months later, 35 of them graduated. That is 52% graduation rate, okay? Um, as fall of 2017, uh, 4,600 students have used weekend college services, and that's the analogy I made about getting in, you know, one course and coming back to, to the original uh, uh, route that they were uh, taking as well. Uh, this is a short video, and I can you click? Can you just click on the black screen? <coughs> I had some other choices, but it was not going to be as efficient. I probably could take one class at a time, and it was going to take a little bit too long, I think. So I kind of want to focus, get it done, and move on. So I stuff to work during the day. Some of the benefits of uh, being enrolled in weekend college is that you get to meet others that are pretty much going through the same thing that you do, that you're going through, such as um, having to work and um, you know, just gaining knowledge from them on different things such as how they work their time management along with uh, weekend college. So it's a lot of sharing and it's like a little nice knit family. I have realized that I can do this. I have believed for a long time that maybe college isn't for me, 
and um, I'm doing very well. I'm getting a good, um, well, really holding a high GPA, and I think that is the biggest benefit for me is that I'm proving that I can do it and I can be a good student. The benefits of weekend college is being able to have that flexibility. You're still able to work. You're still able, still able to be that mom, dad, or whomever. You know, you're still able to have family and and still be in college. I'd say just do it. Do it. Her name is Gina Fong, and she works for the city of Fort Worth. And we held an event once, and she brought her uh, supervisor. We broke all of her laws because we asked her, her supervisor, how she was doing. You know, if, if she coming to weekend college or coming to college, in what way it affected her performance at work, and nothing. You know, the supervisor was delighted, and she was able to actually she finished. Uh, this is kind of two years old, but uh, she finished shortly after that, and she got promoted as well. So you know, uh, people can apply very quickly uh, what they learn to to that. This is the last portion of the of the session, and it's about the the academic affair. I mean, the, the student affairs. I meant to say, for us, it's a it's a mouthful. You know, academic outreach and, and student success. But just very quickly, uh, we we provide a high level of uh, online uh, student services, creating opportunities for them to be engaged, and uh, we leverage a lot in uh, the use of technologies for for those students. Um, we provide academic advising uh, in both ways, face-to-face uh, -face and online. Face-to-face uh, -face because we are one college with six entry doors, meaning six campuses, and we operate as one, so you have the opportunity of doing online advising or face-to-face -face advising, okay? Um, degree planning is very important for, for what we do because uh, if not, students deviate from what, what the main goal is. Um, the, this, is a, this is a little old data, but we have now 15 part-time uh, uh, advisors. If you will, this, you see the communication strategy we use uh, with them. These are some of the workshop series that we deliver for students, and this is delivered fully online. They are, you know, they start live, but then they are recorded and webcasted, so they are delivered on demand as well. Um, this is a, a set of students that are part of PTK, which is the honor pro honors program uh, that we have for community colleges. And you know, we had uh, them uh, being inducted last May. Okay, so we are the only virtual campus in Texas. F first of all, we are the only virtual campus in Texas. Number two, we have or we hold the only virtual chapter of a, a honors a, a organization for for students at the community college level. I don't know how many of you were yesterday um, at the at the main session at the panel. So let's just play. Can you can you click on that screen? Yeah. Let's just play a few a few minutes of this so you see what they uh, have experienced. thinking about getting a degree and they'll think that you have the time or, or the money or whatever or things are too hectic but that's that's not true anymore uh, doing all my courses really does work it just depends on who you are if you need somebody to hold your hand the whole time then you probably want to go to on-campus classes otherwise online classes allow you to carry on a full-time job and go to school and be more successful because I think you're able to focus a little bit more and you spend less time at it because you're not sitting in a classroom for a couple of hours and then doing the same classwork. You're just basically doing the classwork. I got three kids and a job and that gave me the opportunity to continue with my job and also dedicate time for my kids and, and, and just work at my own pace at home. Completing two semesters in college for the first time in my life is pretty accomplishing. Um, Knowing that I can do it and actually pass it has been pretty insane. <laughs> if it wasn't for online, I wouldn't be graduating. I wouldn't be going to a four-year university. I wouldn't be where I was today. 
just the fact that that I could do it, you know, at home and get through everything and persevere through, you know, struggles of you know wife and kids and busy life, and was still able to to accomplish something with that. I have worked full time, the whole time, and then I'm also um, when I take classes in the classroom, I tend to get a little bit bored. Um, online allows me to just take things at a faster pace. Uh, they were recorded the day they were inducted, so you know they were they were you know very honest and happy at the same time. Um, I guess I'm I'm done. Questions, comments. Do you have like fully online faculty, like people yes. who don't even live in Texas or not? Uh, yes, and actually that is part of the desire, um, or expand in, in that aspect. W in my campus I have 15 full-time faculty that are online faculty. Uh, they teach, you know, their regular load. They are, they don't, they don't operate from the campus, although they are welcome to operate. If they want to, if, if they want to use my power and my, and my internet instead of theirs, they can do that. Uh, but, you know, they are away. They come to meetings uh, on a monthly basis, you know, by monthly basis. They participate in communities, so they have all the duties and responsibilities plus the benefits of teaching uh, uh, online. The rest of the sections or the operation is taught by uh, part-time faculty that are full-time faculty at the face-to-face -face campuses. So they become part-time in my campus because they have a main duty in face-to-face, -face, okay? Many of the things are possible because in Texas we don't have unions. Okay, so I, I remember speaking with a couple of colleagues uh, from, from the Northeast and, and I have been exposed to that environment uh, in New Jersey. And in Texas, you know, we have certain things that we can do because it's an, a right to work state. Uh, so again, you know, that's why we have the faculty. That because I, I, I understand that you're receiving like so many people like moving to Texas, moving to Texas. And, and I, I, I I guess that maybe you don't have like enough people to deal with. Well, you know, I, I am, we, we are located in, in Fort Worth, in the Metroplex. It's about eight, nine million people in the entire metropolitan area. We have over 20 universities, okay? And what happens is that uh, many times, depending when we start our recruiting efforts, we lose a lot of people because other institutions are more aggressive. That doesn't happen for Rico at all. The same, same situation. The difference is that over there, we you don't know. We have that many universities. Yeah, so, so you know, that's, that's you know, part of the challenge, but uh, I now can hire from outside of the state of Texas from two states, from Florida and from Washington State. And actually, we have hired faculty on a part-time basis the advisors on a part-time basis, and I think they, they are eyeing full-time faculty now from those places as well. Yes? So, uh, these, the, the different uh, time frames of the instructional course period, have you tried, is that being tried in the face-to-face -face courses yet, or no? No. Why, why wouldn't it? I'm just curious. They are, they, they are recording. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. Let, let's see if later. I can soften. If I can soften the, the statement, the the face to face is a little more um, rigid, if you will. Okay, they have. I mean, uh, uh, I I I consider myself blessed because the online allows me to, you know, I can really bend the rule. If you see what I'm saying, mm -hmm. okay, you know, you always bend it, don't break it. Right. Uh, um, as opposed as face to face, face to face is fixed. They now they are now expected to open from six to eleven. That's a that's a new mandate from the chancellor. Okay, um, and the and the face to face, for some reason, students swirl. You know they they. You know and the and the programs are the same programs, but there's no there's no intention to. Put them in a, in a, you know, if you, if you, the analogy of a channel, when you, when you make the river go through a channel, it doesn't spread. Okay, so I mean that's yeah, I that's as, as soft like as you know, Well, they've tried it at the graduate level and it works, just like the online seems to be working really well. Yeah, and I apologize for not having a particular slide that explains the 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 the, 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 the weekend college program, but 
what happens is that uh, you know you you have your first you have your first seven mm -hmm. uh, weeks students are matriculated in two classes your second seven which are below a 16 they know what those two courses are they are pre-matriculated we don't allow them to take astronomy <coughs> Because then, oh, you know, I'm taking astronomy because my best friend is taking astronomy. I don't like this. Okay, so, you know, it's time, you know, you don't lose with education, but it's time that you didn't use wisely towards your program because your friend is not paying your tuition. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Yes? How does the 24 7 online tutoring work? It's a company that we contracted. It's called Smart Thinking. Okay, so the, the way it works is that students submit written work or written questions, and there is a tutor that responds within 24 hours. Those tutors are, according to the contract we have, they are located in, in different time zones. So there is a number of tutors in each of the time zones of the world, so that's why it allows that 24 hour uh, turnaround uh, uh, rate, if you will. Um, they are PhDs, uh, people with PhDs. Uh, and the other element is, um, is asynchronous rather than synchronous. The writing center is a little more synchronous than asynchronous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a quality control with the process and the students taking the courses, but is that the same for evaluation processes for the faculty? Or how do you evaluate faculty that are yes. dealing with all this? Yes. Uh, uh, courses? Let me see if I can if, if I can answer both questions. Students are required to take an online readiness test before they enroll in an online class. Once you complete that test or assessment and you pass it with the minimum score, you are grandfathered. So you take it once and that's your, your key to that gate. Um, that, ha as I said, happens before, before the, the enrollment. There is a mandatory orientation, okay, that because we are still in building mode, what I want is that that orientation becomes mandatory and it ends with the assessment so then you can enroll. Right now, the orientation and the exam are not talking because there are two different systems. So that's the quality aspect that we manage. The assessment measures aptitude, uh, technology proficiency, writing skills. There is there is a fourth one that I always forget, and you know uh, all that online and students need to make that. Information uh, leaders. Information leaders. I I am not sure. It might be that one, but I always forget the, the fourth one. So, you know, we have that tool. Um, in terms of the faculty, okay, uh, before the inception of the campus, the faculty was not evaluated teaching online. Online was an appendix to the academic offerings. So it was the Wild West, okay? Uh, for what says where the, where the West begins, well, it really begins there. Uh, so, you know, uh, as part of my quality assurance process, um, I implemented a course evaluation system because the courses were not being evaluated. Thus, the faculty was not evaluated. We were operating partially blind, okay? And uh, we don't see this as a punitive <coughs> aspect uh, because there is people doing great work and that work was not recorded or provided to the supervisor. So all this effort was not counted. Of course, the ones that are not doing it well, they were getting a free pass. So we kind of managed that. But it's the exact same evaluation instrument that is used in face-to-face -face with a you know a minor adjustment for the online. Yes. That's a student evaluation. That is the student evaluation. If if the if the question now is about evaluating the faculty from a peer or a supervisor aspect, that is not finalized. Okay, I had the mandate of the previous chancellor to observe faculty to the point that if they didn't deliver, push them aside. Okay, but of course it's easier said than done. Okay, we have created the structure to do that. Uh, I have chairs that do observations. Now I am implementing this semester a faculty coach. It's something that I did at a previous institution that will assist the chairs in validating online presence. Um, making sure that faculty are managing all the things that they need to manage. If they uh, face a challenge in terms of time management, in terms of the administration of the classroom, that coach 
you know, if, if several are having, happening in the same situation, we'll identify a training opportunity, a short one, to resolve that deficiency or that challenge kind of on the spot. Uh, and, you know, we have the structure for those components. It is matter now of sitting across the table and agreeing that they will count uh, and accept that. However, this is towards the district. In the campus, in my campus, all that count. If you don't deliver, if you disappear, if you don't turn grades on time, because I have hiring, supervision, scheduling, and all those responsibilities. So again, I am, that, I am a campus with the duties and responsibilities of that. Questions? Um, yes. As a digital campus, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you face when it comes to an accreditation or reaccreditation process? We, we got accredited in 2015. It took us 18 months. We are, uh, we are in Texas, which is SACS. They are more stringent than middle states. I, I have been in both systems. Um, the, the biggest challenge was uh, the concept itself. Because you know the online, you know there is still a lot of doubts about online. Even though you know you can find reams and reams of paper in research uh, that uh, says that there is no significant difference in the learning outcomes if it is mediated by a computer or um, by a person. Okay, uh, there is a there is a place on the internet called the non-significance or significant phenomenon or difference, and it tells you all the dissertations that base for that. So that was the main challenge. Of course, um, locally speaking, it took a while for people to understand and accept certain things because people thought that we were um, restricting their, their liberties on special faculty, on the teaching load. Okay? Uh, and we had to draw very clear lines, but that's another presentation on itself. Mm -hmm. Questions? Yeah, I mean, I, you're, you were just almost speaking to my, my sort of skepticism, in a way. Um, and, and that is that in, in our situation, um, uh, our, our students who are um, really on the ball do much better in online classes. And our non-traditional students, if we can call them, we take that as a big category, you know, don't necessarily do as well. They're not as, you know, used to the sort of whole process of online education. So, yeah, your your retention rates uh, look great, and, and it's a and, um, it seems like a kind of magic, right? So, uh, uh, you know, I'm asking like, you know, how do we do? Are there what are the outcomes assessments here? Right? But you just sort of answered that question, saying that well, this is a good, you'll, you'll find out with your next accreditation. Right, right, right. right. Um, yeah, it's in five years. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yes, no, no. Is I mean, you you said that, and uh, you know, is is. Um, it's always good to say that there is a lot of work behind that. The thing is that, you know, I am part of a district, so part of the magic is that there are set procedures that I took advantage of. I don't have to create assessment procedures because the system already created them. It's very easy for me to jump into that bandwagon and just go. And whoever complains, that's the document you approved two years ago. What happened? Okay, so in that aspect, you know, there are certain conveniences that were afforded by the type of organization that I'm at. But of course, you know, doing this from scratch, it you know, it takes a um, you know a different approach as well. Well, you can you know put in the objectives into the learning management system and then track it along with the grade. It's not just about the grade. So you, you there is a way you can. Get it ready for sacks. Yes, and totally you know, online. I mean, yeah, no, th and that that is very true. You know, you, but but I guess you know, and, and because of the conversation we had, I know that your circumstances are yeah. uh, a, a little different. Uh, the the technology allows you to, let me just say it this way: technology is very obedient. Okay, if you don't put the fifty, the the, the quarter, on the system, you know, it, it measures the weights and the size. It will not open the gate. So. You know, it will it will not serve you something that you didn't tell the system to serve you. If you don't support, if you don't fulfill that requirement, it's, it's going to show that it's unmet. Okay, and for some people, that is higher accountability on the teaching side, on the advising side, okay, and even on the student side, because again, it's right there. 
there is a question. Oh, I'm sorry, he was first. Sure. I, I wonder if you do any kind of uh, surveying of the employers of your graduates to find out what their impressions are of their performance. The, the district is the one that is doing that, okay? And uh, they, they, they change the tool and the criteria of that survey because of the new chancellor. He's focused on workforce. So, you know, I don't have uh, data on that aspect. When we were ready to do it, he came and we have to kind of put it on hold. But yeah, it's a good question and we haven't lose sight of, of it. Yes. Okay, so how much do you think the honors program, online honors program, skewed your ABC rate? I'm just curious. I mean, have you looked at that to see if it is skewing it? Uh, I haven't. However, I don't think it's much because it's 140 students. Versus however many you have. Versus, versus the large number. So, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not much. It shouldn't be much because, you know, o unless it's kind of the mortgage crisis that the 2% drag down the 98% uh, of the values of homes. But yes. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Yes. We also offer uh, accelerated programs and, and regular 16 programs. Um, so you do that too, right? I mean, students can jump from traditional 16 week into an eight week, and then they can come back. How, how is financially a range in that? Because an eight week is like two modules per long the, the The main element is the 16 weeks. The 16 weeks is your overarching. You have a foreign term. Exactly. You know, that's your point of reference. Anything below uh, the 16 weeks. 10, 12, 8, even 5 weeks, you add them up towards those weeks, towards that length, towards, I mean, within that term actually is the word, and then that's the way you become full time. On the longest semester. That's why they, they matriculate like both terms uh, together. together. Yeah, you, that way you become full time student eligible for the full time, I mean, for the Pell Grant or whatever it is. Any other questions, comments? Well, thank you.